Welcome to the RS2G podcast, where I motivate, inspire listeners by discussing failures, success, and the journey of a rebirth. If you are someone who wants to hear the honest truth from a host that puts his right hand to God as I interview people who have built empires and sometimes watch them crumble as their lives have taken an unexpected twist and turns, this podcast is for you. Life is not always easy. And as a combat military veteran, active military for 14 years, I know about sacrifice and facing fears and true loyalty. I can't wait to take you on this rebirth journey with myself and my guests as we discuss life and living with your right hand to God. Boom. What's going on? Welcome to the RH2G podcast where we motivate and inspire each other and talk about business intellect. And, uh, you know, I just want to say thank you for Stevie just coming online right now and just popping in. Uh, he's a huge mogul in the community and um, also a, a very good friend of mine. And I wanted to have him so you the world can see what his business intellect is, you know, not to jump right into it. But Stevie, thank you for coming, man. Tell him where you where you from and tell him who you are. You know, it's Stevie Nunez, um, definitely a big Latin X influencer um, in life in general. Mm. Um, and and I love to bring uh, the black and brown community together. Definitely. That has always been like my vision mm -hmm. and it has always been like uh, my purpose. OK. Um, in a world where we're so divided, um, there has to be someone that kind of bridges the gap. Right. And I think that that's what I've been doing. But it's crazy though, right? Yeah. Because I live a purpose-driven life now. I didn't know that was my purpose. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. Because when I, you know, I'm Stevie Nunez and I'm a huge radio personality from up north. Okay. Right? And I, I had my radio days down here as well, and we're right. gonna get into that mm -hmm. with Amara La Negra from Love and Hip Hop. Okay. Um, but I didn't know that was like the passion, mm -hmm. right? I didn't know that that's who I was. Mm. And even looking at us right now, um, it, it shows the the world and how it should be. Right. Right? You know, there's not a lot of um, black and brown unity all over the world. Right. But right, right here, right. in this room, right. we can start that. You know what I'm saying? You know, we're stepping it up. <laughs> and we have to. I you know, believe and, that. Yeah. And I never like to bring the whole race thing, but I just think that I, I have I have no choice. This has been like what I've been pushing right. for f since the pandemic. But right. it's just who I am, right? Um, I'm a kid from Connecticut, grew up in the projects. Okay. Corbin Heights, Corbin Zoo, as what they call it. Okay. And um, you look at me and you would never think I was raised in the projects. Mm. Right. Because there's so many stereotypes on what a project kid looks like. Right. And what's the, the end result for a kid that came from poverty? OK. Not that I was born into poverty. Right. When I was born, I was born in New York and my parents was up. They were up when I was born. They they were up. But there's there was a few challenges within my parents, but I could never see, I, I could have, I never, never could um, see myself as a poor individual. Mm. Even if I lived in the projects, I always was so bougie, mm. always dressed up nicely, yeah. always saw myself, and it's because of big vision. And a lot of people perish because of the lack of vision, and I've always had vision. Like, I was a dreamer. Like, when I was a kid, I would, like, role play. Like, right. you know what I'm saying? Like, we'll be outside and we'll be acting like we're in mansions. And, and, or, or I would pull all the, the, the my friend, her name was Janira Silva. Mm -hmm. And she would have, like, teddy bears. And we would put the teddy bears out. And that was, like, my audience. And I knew at that moment that I was always going to have an audience. So you know at that early age, you was an entertainer slash influencer slash uh, um, entrepreneur. Yeah, like I wasn't like your average kid. Right. Every day was like a movie. For you. For me. That's dope. Like the kid that you see on TV with that, 
I was so intellectual. I, I was just so enthusiastic. Um, I was that kid. Right. You know when when we were younger and we would look at kids and be like, "Oh, they should be on Disney. They should be on TV." They that I, that, that was, was me. You. That was you. That was me because my dad was a huge musician. Um, you know, he 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 played what in Dominican Republic they call like guida. Okay, it's like this uh, metal can kind of thing that has like a I call it like a broom and it's like a. Okay, and he did that for uh many people like that couldn't like when the bands used to come from Dominican Republic mm. like Los Hermanos Rosario or Fernandito Villalona these are like big legends in okay. Dominican Republic he would he would fill in and so also my godfather um had a record store called JNN Records record store in Queens <clears throat> and that man right now has a huge record label mm. like that man be at rock nation that man he started almost all the dominican artists so like i tell you i was born into this mm. i was born into the music industry and that was your entrepreneurship spirit always and i, mm. I, I be telling people all the time like we got to be careful who we entertain you might entertain angels unaware and you were a little kid watching this and picking it up and already knew at that early age. And I think that's when entrepreneurship is born. And when you already know who you are and want to be, and, and people try to already, you know what I'm saying? Like at that age, it's like you should learn a little bit more. No, this is who I am. This is what God want me to do. But you've grown into an age to where it's now, it's like you're developing that now. You're shining right. that, you're polishing that skill set off because I have saw you done a variety of things and I'm always impressed and I always wanted to pick your brain about business. So it's just like the entrepreneurship journey and that spirit that you started since a little boy. Can you tell us from high school, how did you continue that entre entrepreneurship spirit? It's so funny how, how you even said high school. Yeah. In high school, shout out to E.C. Goodwin, um, high school, um, I was the leader, mm. like, basically the mascot i wasn't a mascot but like i when whenever you thought of my high school up north you think of me mm. um and shout out to miss camacho she's in the check she's on the check-in right now okay. um miss camacho she literally i remember her getting on the mic i did this performance right it was um it was puerto rican discovery month mm. and we did this big assembly Right, and I did this big dance, and we did uh, this song by Tonyo Rosario called Kuliki Takati. It's called Kuliki Taka, big old song, yeah, Kuliki Takati, like huge song. And um, if you're if you're a person that goes to the gym and do, do Zoom by stuff, I'm yeah. sure you came across that song. <laughs> um, talk about it. I literally put together a dance with about let's say 12 girls. Right, twelve girls, um, black Latinas, white Latinas, they, like all types of Latinas, um, and it was me and this Dominican girl, Iliana, that um, I find out later later on that she's my cousin, mm. and two other couples. I don't Kenya, Chrissy, Orlando. I want to give them shout outs, mm. right? Yeah. And I do this big explosive. Um, performance that just it catapulted me right and right there I knew that I had so many gifts right then I do this performance um, Sean Paul so like I was always in the game yeah. talent shows hosting um, you know but check it at a young age though I can never 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 not say that I always looked for church. Mm. There was like a void. Yeah. There was like a void. Like a spiritual connection. Yeah, like like I could have partied. I was the one to party. Right. Everyone used to follow me. I remember back in the days, I was in this car and I told my cousin Keisha, I was like, watch this. I'm gonna go around in, in the, on the in the block like around the block like a hundred times. Right. And watch all these cars follow me. Right. Because they want to go to where Stevie's going. Right. And exactly that happened. Mm. But I always had this void. And I always had like the Pentecostal girls mm. that used to invite me to church. And I never was opposed to that because my mom was a Catholic. Right. And then 
I got baptized in a Baptist church. And right. then anytime you invite me anywhere, I'm like, I'm there. Like, yeah. if, if I could go to the club, why can't I go to church? church exactly. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like, if I could go to the club, why why I can't go to church? Right. Our, our people don't. I think the, the misconstrued conception of um, of this generation now is, or, or the older generation is, we couldn't come to church looking like how we look now because we would be judged. Right. But not knowing I'm a preacher's kid, so you don't know where I come from. But at the end of the day, it's like, our thought process is di- has been different from the old days to now. Right. Like the church we go to now that me and you met at, right. it, people look just like us. Right. But very frequently back in the day, it was maybe one out of 10 churches you might got a, got a you that could show up like this. or right. we could sh- And we accept it right. because they look beside that. Right. And I think that's why, and, and not to touch on or change the subject, I think that's why um, our church is really booming in that industry because it's a business, right? But at the end of the day, we have a fearless leader. That right. he looks just like us, so it's very easy to say. You know he what? Literally looks I, like me. Don't I can understand. No. <laughs> Your pa- Pastor, Pastor Tommy, Tommy in. Like Your Pastor you Tommy in. <laughs> no, yeah, shout out to Pastor Tommy. <laughs> but look, look, honestly, like I think that's the wave of how it's going. And and God said, "Come as you are." But and, and that's funny that you mix business with spirituality because I think that you have to continue that process because it's going to take a lot of faith to get to where you at, and you have had a lot of downfalls, pitfalls, scandals, and we're going to get into little bits of them, but showing the world you persevered and you and you came from a business intellect, right. but you now you're showing that, hey, you know what? Any kid that's looking at you, this is my blueprint, and you can follow that because it's been tested right. and I failed. So let's get into some of the failures that you received coming into the, 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 the music industry, the entertainment industry. That world is crazy. So coming into that, can you tell us what had happened to you? So, um, actually, I had been ordained a minister at this church mm. um, right now, Ministries. Um, shout out to Bishop Brown and um, my um, mentor, therapist, uh, everything, Bridget Brown, Pastor Brown. That's his wife. Wow. Um, me, she's Dominican. We we have such a connection. Um, I love her. I love her husband, too. He's yeah. like a dad to me. Um, during that time, you know, I had consecrated myself and kind of left the game of like partying and promoting and and the clubs and the streets and the everything. Wow. Um, not too much the street because I'm not a street kid. Right. I ain't gonna sit here and lie. A lot of people be like, "Yeah, you know, I used to do this and gang." So that wasn't me. Y'all hear that? You're looking at the I camera. Was too, like, I was too bougie yeah, for yeah, that. See, you tell me. I was too bougie. Yeah. Like you couldn't. Yeah. I couldn't be in a game because you can't tell me what to do. <laughs> like this, it's I like just the- have my own. Like I just have my own politics. <laughs> right, right. So like I never like to be like the rest. I was born not to fit in, but to stand out. No big homies. So no big, no none <laughs> of that. I mean, I left that to my brother yeah, and my yeah, yeah. sisters and everybody that protected me around right, me. Right, right. But I, I could never follow a crowd. But you knew who you were, though. But I know who I was. Mm. And during that time, I had to. I, I you know, I just didn't want to skip that part. Um, I started at this school called the Connecticut School of Broadcasting. Mm. And it was, hey, guys, it's Steven Nunez. You know, it was very um, proper. Proper. Yeah. It was proper media. Yeah. And um, because I had went to the um, Puerto Rican Parade in New York. Okay. What year on was Fifth that? Avenue. That was 2008. Okay. And Wendy Williams was there. And she has she spoke she spoke to me a little bit, told me about her tattoo and stuff and whatever. And then this anchor from Fox Five, New York, I think it's Fox Five, he interviewed me and I'm like, dude, these people are boring. Like they need some sasong or something. Right. And so I said, I could do that. So I end up going to the school called the Connecticut School of Broadcasting. I was in the I was actually trying to become a teacher. Mm. And I did teach a little bit. I was in education, but I just always knew that communications was was it for me. Okay. Um, because I always used to play around. Like I knew every radio jingle, every every radio jingle. Mm. There was a Spanish one that was like cinco, veintido, veintido, veinti. Like I always used to imitate the radio. Okay. You know, like yeah. I would always listen to the radio and just. So I was like, I could do that. So right. I ended up going into the Connecticut School of Broadcasting, and I sucked. Mm. The first time I ever got in front of a camera, I'm not going to lie to you. It was nervous. 
No, cause cause I thought I was the man okay. when I walked through. I was yeah. I was feeling like the man when I yeah. like I was like, give me the mic. I'm gonna be the first one to show. Yeah. And then the mic the, the cameras go on, and I'm like, pause. You got humbled. Everybody on mute. Yeah. You know, like humbled. You humbled. And then I didn't articulate um myself the same way that all my classmates did. Mm. They were like Stella. Like the way they articulated their words Proper. and their terminology and everything was like up to par. Mm. And at that time, I was from the hood. Right. I had very my vocabulary wasn't up to par. Like like now, I don't even care. Like now, I just say whatever because mm. I'm confident. It right. took a long time to get to this big persona, though. Right. You got a big energy too. Right. Because I used to think like. Oh, I'm from the hood. I used to come in like defeated, mm. like oh, like I knew I had the charisma, and I and but I used to be like, oh, these people speak like proper. Oh, you doubted yourself sometimes coming in them buildings, right? Yeah, and I sucked, mm. and I actually failed. Mm. And and my classmates, um, they actually made fun of me. They like I remember I did this sports um, <laughs> little bit. I was like. Tony Romo scored a touchdown, and they were like, Tony Romo. So, like, they were making fun of me. Teasing you. Teasing me because I had, like, that hood Latin kind of twang. Twang, yeah. right. Yeah. Um, But there's a God, right? Right. And out of all those people, right. I ended up um, getting an internship at Clear Channel, which is, that was, that's iHeart now. I see them billboards all over. Yeah, they're still like indoor, outdoor, whatever. Yeah. Um, I was the only one. Mm. Mm-hmm. I, I honestly shout out to Amy Sunshine. She was in my class. She's a big radio personality as well, and she helped me through the process. But like, literally, started as an intern. Within six months, they they offered me a position mm. at Clear Channel. Speak on it, Les. But the, but get but but listen, to the, the, the plot thickens right because after. Becoming and being employed for Clear Channel, I end up being kind of over the interns. Mm. And guess who came in and I had to interview them? Who's that? Let's talk about it. The same people that was making fun of me. Look at that. Look how God did that. Look at that. And that's why we say spiritual is mixed with business because God will make sure that your enemies or people who are doubting you see exactly what God had planned for you, right? The turnaround. You see that switch? They laughed at you, but now you got to come. I'm the gatekeeper. Right. Now you got to come. And it's funny because literally I used to have to meet them at the door. Yeah, how you doing? Once mm-hmm. Yeah, and they would just look at me like. <gasps> Did you see that um one quote that um I think it was, um what's the guy who played uh, Rocky, uh, Apollo Creed's son, uh, Michael B. Jordan. Right. He said that um, he, um they used to laugh at him in high school and college. And he was walking down the red aisle, I think, um and about to go get a, a Grammy or, or one, one of the awards and stuff like that. And he was being selected, and he saw a girl that used to tease him and said he would never be there. And she asked to take a photo with him because she was a um, she was a um, a reporter. And he said right on on on, on live, like I remember when you told me I would never be nothing. Right. And you laughed at me. Right. Now look at me. You think I'm gonna take a picture with you? Right. No. This album is dedicated right here. to all the teachers. <laughs> right here. Yeah. Right. right. You know, it, it's crazy because I could rewind a little bit. And say this, and no one would ever think, I was literally in self-contained. Hmm. From sixth to eighth grade, I was in special ed okay. and self-contained. And you would never think, hmm. because I'm so like, like you would never think that that, and that's because I wouldn't shut up. Hmm. I talked so much, like how I did now. <laughs> but that's what you do. Right. You take like whatever your strengths and your weaknesses are, and you take your weaknesses, right. and you monetize off of them and it got you to this point right it got you to the big personality of stevie nunez working with just about everybody in the industry right and we're gonna we go caveat into that because i look at you more than just a friend i think i, I look at you as a, a pioneer business we around the same age so i see what you're doing in the personality of the radios i was actually um honored to have um if we speak about it a little bit be a part of his um Reality show that we can't speak about a lot, but he had me on there. And breaking news! And, breaking and news! <laughs> he transitioned me from um, being a friend and our security or a motivational speaker to in front of the camera 
And, um, you know, I was honored to even do that. So let's speak about the opportunities that you continually give people effortlessly without no question. Like, what do you see? What do you see in people when you just pick people out the crowd and say, no, that's one. That's someone I can work with. Well, I move on to prophetic kind of mm. a movement. Yeah. I don't know if you're if you're not spiritual and you don't understand what the pro, um, prophecy is or I can see things in people that they don't see in the, themselves mm. yet. Um, you know, when you look when when you look at me or I look at you, I can see you and you can see me right now. I can't see myself unless there's a reflection or a camera. Right. right? So it always does take another person to see that gifting in you. Right. Right. And it's. It's awesome that you say this because the whole time I had started at a pop station, right. a top 40 station, um, Kiss 95.7. And I would always bring like the youth to like different concerts so they could be motivated because going back to like being special ed and stuff, when you're in those places, you think that there's no way out. Right. Right. But then I met God and he pulled me out. Right. Right. And he brought me to places and opened up doors that no man could close. Right. Like. Parties that don't, like, I was with Jay-Z and Beyonce at the BET Awards hanging out with everybody in an area that you're not even supposed to be in unless you're, like, Somebody. an artist right. at that time. And right. that was at that time. I remember going to the BET Awards mm. and literally walking in faith, and they just walked me. I just walked right in. No invite, no nothing. I was invited to the BET Awards, but I wasn't invited to that area. And I fit right in. There you go. That's where I met James Cruz, which is P Puff Daddy's um, manager. Okay. I don't know if he manages him anymore, but he also used to manage um, Drake and and um, Nicki Minaj while Little Wayne went down. Oh, back in the, back in the day. Mm -hmm, okay, mm -hmm. that's a huge player. So I met James Cruz there, and being a part of like. The bad boy family or even a Ciroc boy, because shout out to Roger Bonds. He made me an official Ciroc boy. Changed my life. Mm. Now I'm like walking into doors that and, and being at Clear Channel. So I'm at Clear Channel. I'm walking. I'm, I'm a Ciroc boy. I'm walking into places that I never thought. Mm. I mean, I'm walking into 106 in Park like it's nothing. Shout out to Kev Connect. I'm chilling at 106 and Park like it's nothing. Now I'm bringing all the youth and and all, all the kids from from my from my hood, Connecticut. putting them in the van and bringing them to 106 and Park to be the audience to meet. I remember Waka Flocka; he was so nice to them. Like I remember Ace Hood, so nice to them. Um, they were excited because they saw this van filled with kids like they just all came out you know they were all teens they were all in high school they were with my brother brandon nunez and he was bringing them they were from the brand high um a school in connecticut and i'm walking them into doors now i'm walking them into doors so it's like and then this girl lasandra too she ended up being a patriots cheerleader i'm i'm walking her into rip the runway right Rip the Runway, which was like a big BET um, fashion show. Back in the day, yeah. Back in the day. Yeah. Right? I remember that. I'm chilling with, you know, with everybody. Mm. And just sitting there with everybody. Because you're supposed to be there. Right. 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 Because yeah. God just. That's where you're supposed to be at. He puts you in places that no man can ever put. I'm telling you right now. Mm. There was, to me, it was nothing but the favor of the Lord. Walking into these places. Come on, man. You could be turned away. Right, right. I never was turned away. It's safe to say, too. I think that uh, your school, um, and I think a lot of schools, and not to get into academia, misjudge and misdiagnose um, children that may have ADHD or understanding problems, but they're not dumb at all, or they're right. not special ed. And to see you here, sitting here, that mirror reflection, that teacher that put him there should look at you and be like, oh, we made a lot of mistakes. Because at the end of the day, you probably didn't want to deal with him, so put him into this situation where you rose from it, but some kids get buried in that situation because they, they don't think anything else. They think that's all they got. And you In your head, you already knew this ain't me, and you're going to sit back and watch. And that lit your fuel since you was younger. And it continues to light it, right, because you talk about but it But I now. had a very strong mother, too. Look at that. My mother, Evelyn from the Bronx, 
very strong. Mm. You ever watch Basketball Wise? You know Evelyn from Basketball mm. Wise, the Puerto Rican girl. She is. I heard of her. Uh, but she's yeah. very fight. Yeah. That's my mom. Oh, that's your mom. Okay. And my mom w- would fight for me. So okay. all that Ritalin, mm. all of that. Um, I call that a gateway drug because mm-hmm. that is a gateway. That is what starts addiction, mm. right? My mom said, "You ain't giving him no Ritalin. Mm. You ain't giving him no medication. He just shut. He just doesn't shut up." Yeah. So, my mom was like, "No." So having a, a parent present too, my mom was like, "You are not gonna be medicated." A lot that. of my friends, that that was a gateway drug. Right. That's uh, a strong mom too mm-hmm. for you. Did you hear that story too? Like, um, you know, shout out to your mom that's being a strong figure. But we don't glorify the strength some of these mothers have, right? So I, I was looking at a um, no, I, I heard it in church today, but I re- I went back and watched a clip of it too, that um, Michael Jordan's mom is the one that negotiated that huge deal for uh jordan nike back in the day right and it was genius to a point to where nobody ever saw or thought about that but a mother's love that's intelligent that want to look out for her kid your mom was doing the same thing for you like no y'all not gonna do that because a lot of medicine medicine chemicals mess up young kids they do and or they want to stay right there because they like the way it feels right right that could you know what i'm saying and i'm glad your mom did that because look what we have now you're now you're inspiring the kids now and now you're going to get a whole different crowd of kids that hey i'm in that type of class i could be a stevie nunez right so let's talk about that and i went to college look at i that. went to college and when i when i hit freshman year right um you know, I was taken out of all those classes. Right. And then I became the president. I was a scholar, National Honor Society, everything. Right. Like, that's why, and I want, it, I want the parents to hear me. When you have a kid that is different, embrace that difference. Yeah. Love on that kid. Because that kid right. could be the next Fantasia. Right. That kid could be the next Diddy. Genius. That kid could be the next Bill Gates. Kanye. Kanye, Gemini, big Gemini gang. You know, I got my Gemini <laughs> yeah, hat on. Eli, of, Elon. E, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like different is good because different makes a difference. Well, I, I think, too, also that entrepreneurs, right. we are the same as them children that right. cannot focus on one thing. Right. And we do so much well together. Right. You have some people that get in that circle and be like, hey, focus on one. And I remember when I was starting my entrepreneurship journey, um, I had people when I was starting my security company come tell me, you can't do X, Y, and th- Z together. Focus on one. And I and I fought it tooth and nail because as a kid, I was good at a lot of things. Baseball, right. football, fighting, doing this, talking, acting. all, all and, I, and, and people would tell you, hey, just stick to what you want to be when you grow up. Everything. Right, right. Right. That's the reason why we own this podcast. Right. Because I transitioned from doing military security i'm a motivational speaker but now my influence of protecting people and listening to i've been in these rooms with all this business conversation i want i was dying to hear from you because it's like let me let me hear it but let the world hear you and understand that hey i can't focus but look what god doing for me right now look at my focus now right you could and, and you can look into the camera and tell them kids like inspire them let them know that you can be a stevie no, you definitely could be a Stevie, but most importantly, you want to be you because God um, wants to make your name great. There you go. Let right? Him know. God wants to make your name great, and you don't have to be no one else. Right. Right? Because when I was in the industry, I tried to change my name several times just to fit in. Right? I tried to change my name to Stevie Steve. I tried to change my name to Stevie Lopez because I was like, oh, it's mainstream. Jennifer Lopez. Oh, my God. I'll fit in. Right. So like me, you yeah. know? Um, what's most important is you... Um, Loving who you are right. and accepting who you are. And when you accept that you are who you are, that's when doors will open. Right. Right? Because you can't try to be anyone. Like, no one could beat me. I'll be me, of, uh, like, being me. Like, right. uh, I'll be in me. Like, I'm the best me right. that I've ever been. Right. And always have been. Right. Right? But just knowing that you are important is what's going to give you the confidence. Right. Like waking up and saying, I'm Carlos. I'm the I'm going to be the greatest astronaut one day and just working towards that. Right. You got to work towards it. I knew I was always going to be on TV. I knew I was always going to be on radio. Right. And one thing it, about it is that I stay focused right. on anything that I want to obtain. Like right. like there's no let, let me give you a little story. Yeah, give me some stories. 
There's a couple stories. Yeah. One, I wanted to meet Jennifer Lopez. Okay. And um, she was coming into town, and I end up, you know, someone ends up walking me straight to where she's at, right? And then it's all empty seats, and then in them empty seats is her mother, her sister. They start walking in when the lights dim. Um, Nick Lachey, Maria, like everybody, okay? Then, okay, right after that, they bring me up to J-Lo's room. Like, I'm with the family, right? I manifested that. Mm. But those are, like, the little things that you want to do. Right. I'm past that now. Right. I don't want to be no celebrity, right. like, unless there is serves purpose and we, we making money together, right, right? right? But at that time, that was, like, a goal for me. Mm. And I obtained it. Another thing was I always wanted to go to Clive Davis's Grammy party. Mm. And I end up going to New York, dressed up, put on a fur, Walked right in. They were turning away celebrities. Like, I'm not going to say the names because it's embarrassing. But they were... Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll put a headshot. Yeah, yeah give, me, give me one or two. Um, One of the guys from One Direction, they, okay. tur- they turned him right around. Okay. Like, he had to leave. Um, There was a couple people. And I was there, seated at the seat with Thalia, mm. which is... um. Tommy Matola, Tony is it Tommy Matola? Is it Tommy Matola? I, to- I think it's Tommy Matola. Yeah, right. His his wife, and I'm just sitting there at the party, and everybody's there, and they're turning away everyone, mm. and I'm sitting there because you're supposed to be there. Because I was supposed to be there. God always had a seat for me at the table, and that's what that kid or whoever's listening right now. Right. There's a seat for you in the table, but right. you got to believe that that seat is for you. Let them know. Like you gotta believe that seat is for you. That seat is for you. Let them Dude, know. Dude, I was talking to Alicia Keys. I got I got all the all the content. Yeah. Like I was with Alicia Keys talking to her. I was with Daddy. Yang. Like these are the people I was meeting. And one thing about me is that I love to network. So I networked all, with all these people. Right. And then when I was in radio, they they kind of frown upon. Oh, when celebrities come, don't really talk. To them. I'm like. I'm the celebrity. Yeah, I remember like, you telling me that. Yeah. Like, a celebrity is just a person with a different job. Right. Like, I'm going to give honor where it's due, and I'm not going to disrespect. Right. But at the end of the day, you are, was a normal person. Right. Right? Right. So, you... Uh, can we curse on, on this? Oh, no, no. T- hey, let them know how it is. Talk. Yeah. You shit and eat the same way that I do. Right. So, that's how I always saw it. And one thing about being a firm believer... Is that idolizing you ain't going to happen. Right. Because you're not bigger than God. Right. So to me, if you're not bigger than God, then I'm not, I'm okay. Like, right, right. I've been in plenty of situations right. where I've been around celebrities and I just sit there like, don't even, this if I don't it. have to talk to you, I don't even have to talk. Like, what right. we have to talk about? I've been in like, right. like real places with celebrities and it's like. What do we got to talk about? Like, right. we really, hi, bye, you're, right. re- you know what you're I'm saying? You're a regular person. I'm not trying to disrespect celebrities, right? right. right? Because you got to give honor where it's due, and a lot right. of them really We're got hard. it from the mud, right. you right. know? I'm JR from Long Beach, California. I'm born and raised, now live in Sarasota, retired military. I'm a motivational speaker, and that's really big going on right now. And this content creator studio that Jen and Betsy has made is going to be very influential in the community and what's going on right now. Kids and everybody is going to join in with content and come here and leave. Just like the rappers have their studios, we have our studios now. I'm the number one free, a free agent motivational speaker. Catch you later. A lot of them really, you know, some of them didn't sleep to 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 get to where they're at. Right, right. They didn't have to sleep around or, <laughs> right. You know, I I'm think being messy. I'm being messy. Yeah, you yeah. better wheel me back in because you know I'll start. It's all Spending good. Some tea. <laughs> I, I I think too. Also, what you just described was it took you a lot of manifesting and motivation. But kids, what he's saying is manifest it, let it let let it motivate you to keep going. But stay disciplined to keep it. I don't think you guys heard the discipline he said to keep it and maintain it. Like he walked up like he belonged there in them spots. And nobody turned him away because his energy was always like, this is me. And that's how I walk in every room. Even when I was a security, I was serving. Mm -hmm. Right? But all the time I used to get, are you a celebrity? And I would see the celebrities I'm serving and it would be like, they're not happy with who who they are. Right. So in the reverse position of me protecting who they are, 
they want to be where I'm at because I have less drama. Oh, I really looked apart, right? This right, is me, right. who I am. I'm not like this is Jr. Right. You you ordered this person. This is who I am. I'm gonna show up like this, right? right? So you meet them, and a lot of them hide behind it because they don't have a lot a lot of self confidence. Mm-hmm. And when you walk in the room, you demand it right. off your presence, right? And you know how to articulate, and you know who's the who, right? I'm a Gemini. You a network? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just saw both too. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm yeah, a Gemini. Yeah. We gonna demand it. We yeah. gonna get it. Definitely. Yeah. But it's so funny that you say that because. Even as a radio personality, I would dress up like this. This was me all the time. Right. And celebrities would come in and they would think that because it was Connecticut, like we wasn't going to dress up. Right. So then they would come in. I remember Safari, he didn't have his fur coat on. I'm like, bro, what are you doing? Come you're, with wearing it. A t- mm. you're wearing a t shirt? Like, you're supposed to be the celebrity. Right. Come with it. The kids like that. Right. Right. Like the, the kids, the people, the women. Like, everyone likes theatrics. Like, right. you're not going to a radio station and then realize that it's boring. Right. 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 Bring it. And and so I do got to say this since Go. we're in Tampa, right? Yeah. So in Tampa, I don't feel like there's a big radio name yet. Right. Never been. Okay. I, I could say Angelie. Okay. Because she's huge. In Tampa. In Tampa. But there's no one with like star. Like when you think of Orlando, you think of like Ricky Padilla. I think they just got in St. Pete, not to cut you off. I think they just got Ricky Smiley on a 102.5. But it's always someone that's like. That's called. That's not like someone that's from Tampa. Oh, okay, like a, somebody that was that born and raised here. Right, right. Okay. That's syndication. Okay, you brought that here. Right. Okay. No, no, no. Listen. No, listen. no, no. They brought him yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So like they had Steve Harvey. Yeah. Oh, they did. There's okay. yet to be, and, and shout out to Orlando and the freak show and all that. But there's yet to be someone that's like a. So, I used to work at the radio station out here. Right. And that what you very the very what you said yeah when I used to go out they used to always think that I was the the big radio personality right, right? when I used to do the promotions events and stuff they used to be like oh my god can I take a picture with you right could you and and it's because of my presence right I feel like Tampa is missing that I feel like in Miami you have DJ Laz right you have a lot of radio Super Cindy right you have um, when you think of like LA, right? You think of like Ryan Seacrest. Yeah. You think of like Big yeah, a Boy. Bunch of people, yeah. You know, there's when you're in New York, you think of Sh- uh, Charlemagne. Yeah. CC the guy, MV, shout out to him. Yeah. All MV, of them. Uh-huh. Funk Master Flex, oh, Angie Martinez. All of them. They, they everybody did. there is like a celebrity, right? Yeah, yeah. When it comes to Tampa Bay, when I used to do events out here, right? I literally used to feel like, okay, they used to be like, okay, you're the radio station. I think it's because Tampa Bay is more big is bigger on sports. Mm. I think that the sports radio personalities are pretty big out here. I gotta listen to them. And so you see, you don't probably not even know a name like that. No, I don't. I don't. And and here's the thing: there's nothing wrong with that critique. There's no. There's nothing wrong with that critique. I just feel like even when I came here, I thought about being at, at at a radio station here. Right. But I was like. Nah, let me go to Miami. So I ended up being with Amara La Negra from Love and Hip Hop because Julian. Yeah, let's talk about that. Um, Trina, Trina's manager, right? And um, Trick Daddy's manager, and a lot of like he is he is a pit bull. He's basically like my manager. You know, mm-hmm. I feel like him and Wack One Hundred are like my my off the record managers, managers okay. right? Yeah. Um. So when I came to out here. I don't know. I was like, okay, I'm going to go to Miami and do the thing. And then I still feel like radio has evolved, but not really. Because I feel like podcasts are really killing it. Like No Jumper's killing it. Right, right. Drink Champs is killing it. Um, RH2G is killing it. Yes. Shout out to you. Yeah. We we got Stevie on here. Yes, yes. And and I I feel like that's the wave. Right. I feel like that's the wave. And to me, like, the ra- so I kind of felt like I evolved from that. Right. Like, I literally was like, when I was on the morning show at Hot 93.7 right. in Connecticut, I kind of felt that way, too. Right. I, I kind of felt like my personality was just, like, outshining. Like, People, yeah. It was like, and there was nothing wrong with that. Right, Shout right. out to DJ Buck. He gave me my opportunity at High 93.7. I was the morning show person. But him and Nancy were the, they were like the the main people. And then when I got in there, it was like, they had no, everybody that was in my position mm-hmm. didn't get to really talk like I did. Mm. 
So it was like they normally had three people right. and they had to get a fourth person because you was not going to shut me up. Right, right. Right? And to me, that was like a perfect morning show because you had Nancy that was white, you had Buck that was black, yeah. and then you had Stevie that was Latino. Like right. it was like a perfect gumbo. Right. But I say all of that to say this. Yeah. I literally feel like Tampa, and I feel like I'm kind of like challenging it right now. I think like Tampa needs that person. I believe we could fix it. You know how? I'm from Long Beach, and um, you from Connecticut. We both live here. I think we should put our powers together sometime and and see how this goes. Like you bring the messy entertainment, I bring the business. We bring audience. Like I'm I'm talking to the camera. Like I'm right. trying to. Me and Stevie can work together because I believe that. It deserves a personality here, right? Like a no jumper feel. This is professional. We got some good producers. We have uh, Betsy Tenervin that's um, running this whole, this is her whole situation that right. she, God blessed her to let me put my voice on the air. So I want to give her a shout out, let her know, thank you, because without this, without her, this is not possible. And right. without you coming here, the dream that we're talking about, that we we manifesting, that we say we talked about it before, that we're gonna collaborate on a lot of different right, things. But I right. believe once a month we can bring a superstar artist. And we here met at church. In, in, in church, right? We met at church, and I think shout that we can crossover. Th shout out to Pastor Tommy and crossover, and I believe that we can join union. But I have a one more question before I, um, you know we move on to the next segment. Like, let's talk about like your influences in the industry, and you have dropped a lot of names and been around. Let's talk about this um, real quick about this reality show that you got coming up. Just a little bit. Can you just tell the audience about your reality show that the world is going to see next year? So I connected with Rasby's brother, Ricky Romance. Okay. And um, shout out to Amber Rose, too. Like, I connected with um, Apple Watts okay. from Love and Hip Hop. Shout um, out to Apple Hollywood. Watts. Um, and you're going to see her journey. Yeah, she got into a little bad car accident. Mm -hmm. But she is, whoo, my motivate. Like, she motivates me so much because she does not stop. Um, We end up doing a show called Hustle and Gamble. Okay. Um, I, I've always been like, a lot of radio people, they're scared to get in front of the camera. Right. Like, when I first started radio, I was starting, I was doing the lives and a lot of radio personalities were like, I would like turn the camera to them and they would be like, don't do that, don't do that. Because there's a thing called face for radio. But I'm going to tell you why. Because as us listening to the radio, I would hear um, 92.3 to be, and I'm from LA. And if you listen to Theo, right? if you listen to Theo's voice, Theo sounds a different way than he look in person. Right. You have the face and the look, but a lot of these people have the, the, the sound. Right. But when you meet them, you're like, oh, and that's what I see when I meet people. I'm like, oh, that didn't match the sound. Right. Yeah, like when people meet me. You are him. It's funny because Wack 100 just said that. Wack 100 was like, we was at a, a dinner. It was me, Wack, R&B, and Lady Killer. And Wack, <laughs> Wack was like, Stevie is exactly who, exactly what he sounds like on the radio is exactly who he is. That's what you and that, and, and And that's important to me, right? Mm -hmm. Because it becomes kind of fraudulent. It's an imposter nowadays, syndrome. nowadays it becomes kind of fraudulent because there's a thin line. Back then, you could have gotten away with that. You could now you can't. So they put me in front of the TV, and it's called Hustle and Gamble. I'll be sure Junior is in it. Um, so many people, right? Um, Mimi, um, Coolio's ex. Mm -hmm. I mean, whoa, not ex. His his wife. Um, sh she was a part of it. I went to Vegas. I filmed, but the West Coast. When Stevie invaded the West Coast, LA. it was a wrap. Hollywood. I went to LA. I hung out with Amina Butterfly, yeah. and I ate at this restaurant called Casa Vega. <laughs> Bad Bunny was just coming out of it. Yeah. Um, Sally Cologne, shout out to her, Jerry Malcolm. Like when I got over there, it was like, oh, You're I think to... the West Coast is for me. Yeah. You know, like. Yeah. And so I did this reality show. I'm the one that started all the drama and all the mess. Okay. And so then now I'm working on a spinoff. And the spinoff that you're on. <laughs> yeah. The spinoff that you're on. Yeah. Um, What was your experience like? <laughs> this is the radio and me. Yeah, yeah, what was your experience he's trying, like? He's trying to flip it on me. But um, actually, I was honored to even play anything that he wanted me to play. But um, um, it's he gave me a role to play that's really not me, but I play it to a point to where 
all right, this is what Stevie say. Looks right. Let's do it because I trust you in business and right. I watch how you move and I know you wouldn't jeopardize me in any situation. I think that you're trying to spotlight me so people can see me in all different aspects. So I appreciate it. But it was fun. Stevie had me on the boat. He had me wrapped up in some situations with uh, his lady friends, but not like that, but just politics. Not too much. Not, not too much. much but NDAs, just, NDAs. Yeah, just, <laughs> yeah, just politicking, politicking and just yeah. having fun. And I saw his family come out there, and uh, I, I'm seeing his success, and I'm happy to even be a part of it. And if I get called again to be a part of it again, I'm there, and um, I'm happy. Oh, no, you're a part of it. Yeah, I'm happy, you know, because I know that. Producers is loving you. Shout out to Ty Jackson. Shout out to all the producers. They're, yeah. they're loving it. Definitely. See? And I, I think... And, and that's the same story he just told that that's where God want me to be at is I've been se- serving a lot, bodyguard and security, um, serving my country, the military. Um, and I think that God wants me to get my voice out there. I'm a motivational speaker. I'm a life coach, but I'm a father. I'm a lover. And I believe my personality deci- um, needs to be reckoned with, too, right. in front of the camera. And I appreciate right. you. Nah, dude, you did your thing. Thank you. I, when the world sees you, it's going to be crazy. <laughs> Starstream Network. I'm not even supposed to give it too much, yeah, but yeah. but it's it's definitely been a ride, definitely a ride, and and like shout out to Wack 100. Okay, um, it, I didn't realize that has always just been organic. Well, That's my bro. Mm-hmm. Like you know, we worked on, you know, I, I you know help push records and stuff like yeah. that back into my radio days, and but being associated with Wack is like crazy because yeah. <laughs> crazy right. and we could talk about you know when we come back we could talk about messy mondays with whack 100 no no we could we could talk about it we got a good good a little bit more to talk about but at the end of the day like i'm from the west coast so i i i i know the politics out there with california and i would say that whack is an awesome businessman like I, his i watch how like i heard him on clubhouse and um he was talking about the west coast like the aura that it has in the industry right now and um we all feel like we're behind. You know, it's competitive, right? West Coast, East Coast, people, you know, but we feel like, you know, I was born in the 80s, so NWA, Snoop, Dr. Dre, Cube, Easy e like, that was the era, right? So our music is a little behind right now out there in the West Coast, and he was telling someone about having a, um, a personality like, hey, um, you should do this, and you're the face so don't crash out, right? So I respect him telling another young black man saying, hey, check it out, like gang, gang banging is this and this is a politics, but stay to this because this is right here. This is the navigation point, right? So he, he's from the streets. He's been in the streets. He politics with a lot of California. I'm from Long Beach, so our politics is different from L.A. and Compton, but we still see and we still understand and we have our own stuff. And um, I see him, too, on that side of business, coaching these young black men into success and minority men and he does. people like yourself. Opportunities. Like, he that, gives opportunities right? like crazy. So I appreciate him doing that too. Like um I'm not a drama filled person. So I see a lot of stuff that go on, even in the camps I'm in. But at the end of the day, I believe that we can all get money together. And I would love to interview him and have him here and, and, and introduce who I am. You know, I don't want no conflict of interest, but at the end of the day, we are business. And I believe that the world needs to see someone like myself too because I didn't gangbang for a long time I went into the army after I got out of of, of jail so when I went into the army my whole situation changed I'm from Long Beach so when it changed I started fighting for my country then I came out as a businessman but I I still know the politics in California because all my uncles all my even my sister they all from Long Beach hoods so I know what's going on but I believe that the world need to see someone that's from that section talk about business too and say hey you know what we could get it this way too. So I will agree with him on a lot of business, and I'm happy that you have him because he's a force to be reckoned with inside the industry because he learned it from Suge, right? How, that's like me. I'm a bodyguard, and I'm watching people do their job, go to video shoots, perform. You you crazy if you don't think I'm taking notes. And even watching you, I'm taking notes because when my time turn, I'm not going to always be that forever. Now look what we have. And whack. He does a lot for a lot of people. I see that. I yeah. mean, shout out to Incredible Diapers. He got yeah. those diapers coming too. out. Yeah. Shout out to the vote. He's he was in Dominican Republic, um, but he talk about inspirational. Yeah. The man, like, I mean, Kanye West takes his advice, right? You know, um, Jason. Lee, like, these are names. Shout out to Floyd. Floyd Mayweather mm. rocking with him, right? He literally see. 
a lot of y'all know Whack 100 um, for however. I, I don't, I just know the industry stuff. I don't get into the politics of, mm -hmm. of life. Like I said, that just has never been right. my thing. Um, it's all business. Right. And one thing about Whack, he's business. And that's what I respect from him. He's, he's, he's all business. I would say and that. We, he's like that 24 7. Well, I would say that I see like, yeah. It's a kind of like a, a aggressive intelligence he has that he didn't even go and, and go to school for that. People pay for that type of business savvy that he has, that he can get in these rooms. Like myself, I can get in rooms where you don't think I should be, but I'm sitting next to people that's pushing these buttons. That's what he's doing. And I and and we have to respect that. Right. That's why I'm giving that man his flowers now. Now, like the other stuff, that's that's on them. I don't talk about that. I got artists. I got people connected in the streets. But that man is a businessman. And if you don't see what he's doing right now, he learned from Suge Knight. He learned his mistakes, what not to do. He sat next to Diddy. He sat next to all these people and picked their brain. And now look what he's doing now. And, and, and you cannot say that, hey, you know what? You hate the man that bad where you hate his style of business, right? Because he's involved with everything. But you being with him, that's a good look because he ventured out and grabbed you and said, hey, listen, let me give you some guidance, some mentorship. Because I think we all need mentoring, right? Right. Well, if we receive it well, say, hey, I'll take this he's mentoring. He's definitely, it's crazy because, like, you know, with my background and stuff, you, you wouldn't think, oh, like, people be thinking, like, oh, Wax not my mentor. I, like, to me. I've learned a lot from him. Right. And it's crazy because it happened organically. It wasn't like, it wasn't like that's what I was looking for. Right. Or whack. It's almost like we just connected because there's a method to our madness. Right. And I think that's what we have in common. Right. Is that there's a method and we understand. Right. Right. Like we move on one accord, like me, the 100 side, um, then that's on Clubhouse. Right. We move on one accord. I mean, it's so crazy because, like, even when I had, you know, my meeting with Slim with, from Cash Money, yeah. I called them and I was like, I'm in Miami. They flew us in. I'm bringing an artist to Cash Money, a Latin artist. And he was just like, and it's just organic, bro. Right. And I feel like a lot of people are around people like me and Wack for clout. They are. Well, and, it, it, and 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 I'm just grateful that I'm in the industry and he's in the industry. So it kind of like the dynamic right. between WAC 100 and Stevie Nunez right. is dope. It's a collaboration. Well, I think WAC is with the Latinos. Right. It's a collaboration with the Latinos and like, you know, I know he got six nine and stuff and six nine. I mean. I don't know if I yeah. should say he got him, but, you yeah. know, he's been there. I don't know what the... I don't know... Too, like, I told you, I don't know too much right. about... But, like, when you think of a Latino, you think of me. Right. So, like, I, I'm really... So, there was something called Latinx 100. Right. You know what I'm saying? Latinx 100 is dope. Right. It's like a, a, a branch off to the 100 right. ENT. Right. And um, it's super dope. I got my hands on in, on a lot. Right, I see. Look at that, and that's what the world is listening to right now. But you want to know the inspirational part about it all? Yeah, that I have a son that requires a lot of attention. Right, he's young, and right now, that's why Florida is a good place for me because I'm really being a father. Right, but it's funny because when I chose, because back in the days, like I was hosting a Cardi concert, uh, you know, a Jada Kiss concert, or this or that, right. and I was never home. Right. But with my with my son and and now having like my daughter, um, I've been a dad. But it's crazy because since I have put a focus on being a dad, a husband, oh, a lot of people don't even know that. Right, right. See? Um, God has opened so many doors. So many it's like God is working for me. Like before I wanted the fame. Like I was after the fame so like I was thirsty for fame because mm. I was in my twenties. I wanted, you know, to be the Puerto Rican Diddy, the Puerto Rican Dominican Haitian Diddy. Like I wanted to be, but now I don't even look for fame. Right. And I feel like all of it just organically comes. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because I'm focused on my my family. Right. I, I have prioritized. Right. And I have actually declined a lot of opportunities because I want to raise my son. Be there for him. I mean, he's a junior. Right. right. 
I mean, he's and and right now, you know, he's developing a little different. Right. And so um, I have to be there for him. Right. And I have to take him to a lot of appointments. I have to, like, be a dad. Right. You know, um, I'll say it. Right. I haven't really said much. Right. Um, you know, he's delayed in speech. Mm. And it's so crazy because what, what did I say in the beginning? Like, all I did was talk. The boy has my name, right? And I feel like he's being attacked. But when that boy starts to speak, that boy is, is going to take over the world. Gonna blaze it up. Stevie Nunez Jr. Mm. If Stevie Nunez is nothing to play with, play where it's safe, Stevie Nunez Jr. is going to be a problem. A good one, though. A good problem. That's going to start, that's going to create change and that's going to continue to work. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Change. I feel like I have changed the, the world a lot. A lot of people don't accept, especially on the West Coast, like, they don't accept um, my kind that much in the industry. Mm. And, um, like, Dominicans and Puerto Ricans and Haitians, we're, we're different. We're, like, Caribbean Latinos. Mm. And so, nothing against the Mexicans, but on the West Coast, they see the Mexicans... One way, and we are nothing. Like, the only thing, we are nothing. Like, and shout out to Mexicans. I love them to death. Right. I love Selena. Right. I love right. <laughs> Baby Bash. I love all the Mexicans, Selena Gomez. I think their culture is dope. Right. Right? Right. I think they're dope. They're Mexican. We love, we love Mexican. When Cinco de Mayo come, everybody love, everybody's Mexican. We, we turn it up. Uh, everybody eat tacos. Yeah, but that's the difference. Dominicans and Puerto Ricans and Haitians, we don't eat tacos right. for dinner. Right. <laughs> we 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 can. Right. Because in the world that we live in, you can eat whatever you want. Right. But that's not the go to. Right. Like we eat rice and beans right. and chuletas and panid right. and a lot of pork and a lot of and um. There's a difference. We're Caribbean. I would say. I mean, I grew up there, so I grew up in Long Beach and. Uh, it was multicultural, like a lot of blacks, a lot of Mexicans, a lot of Cambodians. But I remember vividly, and um, I tell this story all the time, that it was these two girls that stood out. Um, shout out to Kimberly and Lydia. I still remember them. They was in elementary school. And I didn't know what they were. Um, we're Jamaican-American, but I see I see everybody around us. But I didn't know what they were. They looked like a little mixture of everything. It come to find out these two girls that was two years apart, I was in love with them, both of them at the same time. I was a little boy. And um, they were Dominican, right? Right. And I, I told myself all the time, I said, um, I'm going to find them when I got older. And as I ventured out as a man <clears throat> and traveled the world, the DR has been one of the most beautiful countries I've visited to in Puerto Rico. I lived in Arecibo for about eight months. Oh, wow. Um, because Shout out I, to that. Arecibo? I, yeah, I was out there because of the hurricane, and Maria tore it up, so I, I did security I for think my island. family is from Utuado, Arecibo, yeah. all of that. That's crazy. I lived out there, so I, I did that little ride, but it always interests me. So even with you, when I came to Florida, I was like, okay, now I see the demographics. Miami, Orlando, Florida have a lot of the the the, the, the tropical, um, you know, a lot of the islanders out of this area in California, um, I think it's a lot of Samoan, a lot of Cambodian, Black, Mexican, um, a lot of Cuban too. It's a lot of Cubans because I have a lot of family members that are Cuban too. But I think it's just the demographics. But they got to understand, right? So they used to seeing Hispanics, but not Puerto Rican and Dominican because it's like y'all bring a different flyness to the game, right? You you know when I was in the island. I, I'm inspired sometimes to get my beer like that sometimes because it's crispy. They get right. they, they they you know what I'm saying they attention to detail. Well, they get you know like uh, they call everybody Mexican and it's like and 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 the thing is is that Puerto Ricans and Dominicans they like to gatekeep who they are um, as far as being Dominican because it's a culture in Puerto Rican. Right. It's just like Jamaicans. Right. Jamaicans don't like to be called African. No, nah, but they are from that the continent. But they yes. don't like to be called yeah. your African. They, Jamaican. I'm Jamaican. Or Haitian, yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm Jamaican. So 
to me, I think the reason why those Dominican girls stood out to you because our cultures are very similar. Yeah, definitely. No, and I you know, see. Spanish was a language in Jamaica yeah. <clears throat> too. Yes, definitely. If you Google, it, I'm not not Google because Google whatever. <laughs> if you do your history, you'll see that Spanish was actually like a language in Jamaica too. So to me, it's funny that you say Dominican. I always felt with this dembo and this reggae, like Panama, right, with a general. And Dominicans, they're really close to the Jamaican. Yeah. But we're all I from the islands, right? And what people don't realize is that I think a lot of why it works like in New York, opposed to like in California with the black and brown community, is because there's a lot of Jamaicans in New York. Oh yeah, definitely. Right? It was a Jamaican that that really a D- Jamaican that really Started hip hop with like a Puerto Rican that was like break dancing yeah. and and spray. and it's like they don't understand that in the West Coast right. because there's so much division. Right. And to me, I feel like when I went to the West Coast, I definitely had to let them know that I that I'm something else yeah. because I just feel like I'm gonna come in with this stereotype that oh there's some type of division. Yeah. And to me. Up north, it ain't like that. Right. In the south, it, it's getting a little better in Florida because a lot of New Yorkers are coming in here right. and a lot of people. But there's like some division that's weird. Right. It's weird and I never, and, and it's like, and I understand the history of it. Right. I understand the history of it. I understand the history. Okay. So I can never, I can never erase that and I can never um, not acknowledge that. But I just couldn't. I, I couldn't get with it. I couldn't get with you're walking and because you don't look like the other person, they like turn their face. Right. Or they and it's like to me, I just couldn't I, I can't see that because where I'm from, where I'm from, it's not about race. Right. It's about your hood and where you're from. Right. And we all came up together. And we all struggle together. Well, I think that's I think that the the California that you're, you're talking about is more Hollywood and Beverly Hills, and they turn their nose up to 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 us too, right? But if you come down to the urban situations, you fit right in, because like just say if you go to Long Beach with me and I introduce you, they're gonna accept you because it's a broadened horizon out there. We, right, right, we, right, we, right. We are a mixed uh, population out there too, as well, especially in Long Beach. It's some of everybody. I saw there. that in Vegas. In, in Vegas, yeah. it was lit. I yeah. went to this yeah. Latin club in Vegas, yeah. and they had everything, like all yeah. types of Latin music. They had yeah. merengue, bachata, salsa. Like they had, like everything, and then yeah. they had like hip hop, and like for me, that's another thing with like Tampa too. Is that like, and I don't want to like my thing with Tampa is that there is not a club that like really plays everything. It's like. It, like evenly, like it's almost like if you go to this club, you're only gonna hear Spanish music. Right. If you go to this club, you're gonna hear hip hop. Right. In New York it's and in everything. Connecticut, yeah. You go to a club, you sound, uh, somebody and you listening to everything. Yeah. Like you listening to hip hop, then bow R and B, and everybody's singing it, singing to it. Right. People are not getting off the dance floor because that's not their music. Right. They're, 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 that's not their culture. No, 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 no. Everybody. Right. Like, when it come to reggae up north... Everybody. Everybody's on that dance floor. Like, reggae is so big up north. Right. It's, but, like, out here, it's like... I'm just going to put a headshot in. If you're Latin, you just want to listen to salsa and, like, and bachata and merengue. And that's crazy to me because you live in America where right. it's mixed. Right. So, like, it's not that I'm saying, oh, you're in America, speak English. No. What I'm saying is you're in America, and America kind of has a culture too, right? right? yeah. And so it's kind of a mixed culture. Right. And so, like, I could rock to everything. And I feel like that doesn't happen. It's almost like when you're walking around, it's almost like, where's the club that's playing techno? Where's the club that's right. playing hip-hop? Where's the club that's playing merengue? It's right. not like up north where you'll have techno, merengue, salsa, everything in one right and so like here i have to like get bits of everything so like if i want to so like one thing about here is that you really got to club hop if you're like that yes you like you got to like really club hop and whatever and we don't got to talk about the club so much but like i just feel like it's not so integrated how it is up north and yeah. we understand the history we understand right right but it's kind of like you're missing out right you're missing out right you because see. the same type of music all day is boring right you're really missing out. 
So I, that's that's my thing. I'm a really, if you can see, I'm very passionate yeah. about coming together yeah. because I feel like we're in America and yeah. everybody lives here. And that's why we This we're is here. nobody's country. Right. This is everybody's country. Right. Definitely. Mm-hmm. And that's why we're here and that's why we did the podcast. And I want to say, you know, thank you for coming on and thank you for just showing the world your business intellect. And I want you just to look into the camera and tell the kids real quick um, how they can find you. Pull up his Instagram real quick and and just show us real quick what's on your gram and what's on your YouTube and have the kids like tell them how they can find you and, and where you could be at and stuff like that. So, well, I don't think the kids should um look me up. No, I'm just kidding because yeah, yeah. <laughs> the That's content it. I just played. Yeah. But yeah, 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 this is my Instagram. My Instagram, my IG is Stevie Nunez, S T E V E Y N E W N E Z. And if you see here, you see Amara La Negra, you see my reality show, you see my cash money visit. At Hey um, Factory, you'll see, you know, my lifestyle. You see me with Amber Rose and Wax. Oh, that that was a lot because yeah, yeah. they got because like me and Amber Rose used to like do like basically right. sh- rooms together and mm-hmm. shows together, and then that they end up fighting Wax and Amber, and that was like, oh man. Then you see R and B. Yeah, you got his YouTube channel on there. You got my and no. Uh, I, I don't really. Mm, oh, I'm, not a, I'm okay. not a big YouTuber. Okay, okay. Yeah, I think that you're probably speaking that into existence. Okay. Actually, we're I doing wanna, it now. You know what's so crazy? So let me just tell you. I used to think like YouTube was amateur, and now it's not. Like people go live. Yes. YouTube is like it's cracking. the thing. Yeah, you, you got like yeah. no jumper. You right. got Jason Lee. Yeah, I was surprised that he went from Revolt straight to YouTube. Yeah. Like he just I don't he think he's on Revolt him. no more. Yeah, and it was dope. It yeah. still was dope. Mad views, like Jason Lee is so inspiring because he's so he's so self-made, right? So right. shout out to Jason Lee. Shout out to Jason Lee. I love Jason Lee. Like yeah, maybe we, we can bring him on here. We, we I talk to him yeah. from yeah. time to time because yeah. you know a clubhouse and stuff. But yeah. you know he's cool. Yeah. It's heck. Yeah. Um, Amara is is super dope. Um, she's doing her thing. So shout out to Amara. I will always leave that pinged. Um, me and Amara yeah. did a show on iHeartRadio. Yeah. Um, shout out to Enrique Santos. Right. Um, he's pretty big. He's he, but he's syndicated in Tampa oh, too. Okay. But um, Amara is dope. She gave me like the dopest um opportunity when I came here to Florida. Julian and Amara really put me out there. I kind of felt like I went from when I started with Amara. It's almost like I went from local radio to like becoming international, international. TV. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Um, that's whack. You saw that's me and whack. Up, oh, you could go up a little bit. Uh, whack 100. That was us right there. Okay. And then that's me and whack right oh. there. Okay. Uh, that was at, at dinner. <laughs> he said they put all the black people in. Oh, he ain't lying. And then you have like this show that I, you know, Mariah Lynn from Loving Hip Hop. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We did a show what called. Right. Lynn? Here we go. Can you give me a Spanish word that we can use? <sighs> Yes, we can. Yes, that's yeah, see, you can pause it now, but you can pause. You know, there's um, a lot. We there's re- a lot. We really wanted to show the world Stevie Nunez's uh, business intellect and where his entrepreneurship journey came from, and we just want to say thank you for coming on RS2G and um, you know leaving the kids with something to follow. Like it's a lot of things that's going on in this world right now: politics, religion, and personal issues and we want to be, be able to give you a good peace of mind which we can talk from our intellect and let the kids know what's your blueprint you know what i'm saying and my following statement i just want to let people know that the magic you're looking for is in the work that you're avoiding so if you're idolizing people and not getting to work go get to work basically right stevie got to work they told him he couldn't when he was a little boy they put him in certain classes they Statistics, isolated him you already know they, they tried to Stop his dream and now look exactly what he's doing because he was able to make one of my dreams come true and transition me from being security to being on a camera and being com- comfortable and being in that setting. Where so I, I come you. from, where I come from, statistically, I'm supposed to be in jail. Yeah, I'm supposed to be in jail because of where I'm from. Yeah, and I have <sighs> proven them wrong time and time and time right. and time again. It's funny because shout out to Stevie Nunez Day. I got my own day in my city. Yeah. Um, the mayor, she yeah. gave me Aaron Stewart, she gave me my own day, and yeah. I had my own day in um, Massachusetts as right. well. So Connecticut and Massachusetts, shout out to June Archer. Right. But let me tell you, um, I, what I definitely want to do, and I want to speak this into the airwaves, into existence, okay. I really, with the little bit of time I got, because I got a lot of stuff that, you know I do a lot. Right. It's hard to get me. Right. 
it's hard to get because I'm always in Cali. I'm always doing this. I'm right. always got my hand in the lie. I got my hand on this cash money Latino thing. I got right. my hand on artist development. Pac Man is an artist that I'm working on too. Um, I would love to start a um, gifted and talented um, kind of program to find the talent in uh, Tampa. Let's do it. I feel like there's not a, a, a program for that, and maybe there is. Yeah. But I really would love to. Um, shout out to Donna Wright, right? Donna Wright managed Backstreet Boys and Sing. She's my mentor. I was looking for a boy band for many years. I'm still looking for a boy band. That's yeah. another show that I'm going to yeah. do. Yeah. I'm going to executive produce that. Mm -hmm. Executive produce and you executive produce with me your your um story yeah. as well. There's a lot that I want to do. Right. When it comes to Tampa, since we're in Tampa right now, right. I definitely want to help um, the youth. I feel like they need... There's talent here, and we just don't know where it's at, where because there's it? no there's no access. I used to have a program, a, a, a program, a business called the Nunez Connect, and right. we literally, you know, because artist development and all of that is like not a thing at labels anymore. And mm -hmm. I used to basically have that, and then bring them to the labels. I would bring them to Republic. Right. I would bring them to um, Atlantic. I would bring them to you know because shout out to my, a lot of my interns are now big at the at the labels. Right. Cause I was at the radio station, so a lot of so I do have I do consider myself Stevie Connect, right. the Nunez Connect, right? And I'm a shameless plug. I'm the Nunez Connect, and I do I can help you go to the next level. I can because it's so funny to me. I have helped people go to the next level, and they have surpassed me, and right. I'm okay with that, right? Right, because those that come after right. should be greater, right? So I'm okay with that. So if you want, if you have a talented um, per person in your family or an artist, or tap in, tap in with Stevie Nunez. Tap in with him. Instagram, yeah. Stevie Nunez, S T E V E Y N E W N E Z. Thank you so much for having Thank me. Thank you. Here today. And I also want to just leave the listeners and the viewers with this. Just remember what Stevie just said in his podcast and everything that he was articulate. Um, winners don't know, we don't no longer need motivation, you need discipline. So you got the motivation already. I'm a motivational speaker. Now you got the discipline. You definitely you see exactly what can happen. <laughs> and we're going to do some more magic. You will see us in a couple of weeks. Thank you guys for coming again. I and appreciate you. And you see us on TV. Yes, definitely. And you see us Next on year. TV. Next year. Yes, yes. <laughs> 2024. Thank you, guys. Hey, so it's a capsule. Hey, so oh. It's a capsule. Hey, man. That mad cause you told the truth. That's why they mad. That mad cause you want to be you. My name is Dr. J.R. McIntyre. I'm a certified motivational speaker and a social media influencer. And I can't wait to teach you how to excel your real estate business on a LinkedIn platform. LinkedIn is actually the most underrated social media platform. In my class, Elevate Your Real Estate Success or LinkedIn Mastery, you will learn three key principles. Number one, how to generate your high quality leads. Number two, get personal branding and excellence. Number three, strategic networking strategies. If you want to be a disruptor in the real estate industry, this class is definitely for you. I see you online and I can't wait to take your LinkedIn profile to the next level. JR out. Boom.